Hi, this is engineer Mohammed al Namara. We start with this video explaining the torsion of beams. The torsion is a vertical moment act on the main axis for the beam. So, in addition to the forces of the shear and the moment, the beam can be exposed by the torsional moment torque. This torque will result in the presence of the shear stresses that may interfere with the shear stresses resulting from the forces of the shear. Thus, we conclude that the shear stresses on the beams are produced by shear forces and torque. When the beam revolves around its axis, section within this beam will not rotate in the same angles. So, there will be friction between the adjacent sections. Therefore, we expect the greatest stresses will be on the external parameter of the beam section. Okay. The question here, how well I can resist the stresses on the outside parameter of the section? We used to say that the vertical legs and the stirrups were uh, resisting the shear forces that acting on the beam. And we will take the number of vertical legs and the stirrup for resisting the shear force into account. But with regard to the torsion, it is different because the stresses inside the section are very small. So, there is no significant impact when we add additional stirrup inside the section of beams and it will not be influential in the resistance. So, uh, with the outer stirrup we resort to something else so that we can resist the stresses resulting from torsion. If I study the shape of cracks after the occurrence of torsion, I will know that the cracks were on the outer parameter with angle of 45 almost. It is known to resist cracks in sections, we use reinforcing bars, but cracks occur on the angle of uh, 45, and the presence of reinforcing bar perpendicular to the cracks is difficult to implement. Therefore, we can have a practicable solution. Uh, actually, I have stir, which represent the vertical reinforcing in the sections here. If I use longitudinal bars, it is sure that the resultant force in both directions will effectively resist cracking. So, to summarize, to resist the forces of the torsion, we use stirrup on the outer parameter with longitudinal bars. Normally, the beams are not exposed to pure tension only, but they are exposed to torsion bending and shear forces. Thus, the cracks will be complicated in the sections. The torsion generated on elements can be divided to two types, equilibrium torsion and compatibility torsion. Okay, but what is the difference between these two types? The first type, equilibrium torsion, it is a torsional moment that is needed to achieve the balance of the structure. There is no load transmission without it. This occurs because of eccentric loads. So. This type of torsion cannot be neglected, otherwise it will be collapse. The torsional moment cannot be reduced by redistribution of internal forces, and the torsional moment is required to keep the structure in equilibrium. For the second type, compatibility torsion, if there was not enough resistance in the element, the process of redistribution of load will happen, and this type does not lead to collapse. This type of design can therefore be neglected because the process of redistribution loads is possible. To illustrate more, we have a case which represents the compatibility torsion occurrence. If the torsion is not considered, in this case, the structure will not collapse, but the loads will be redistributed. In the second case, which represents the equilibrium torsion occurrence, in this case, the beam CD will be collapsed and therefore the torsional moment must be taken into account because it is necessary to achieve balance in the structure. So, if we neglect the torsion here, the beam CD will be collapsed. Okay, we'll stop here and uh, we'll complete in the next time we'll study the equations of American code and then uh, we will review the torsion to be ready for design questions. Please feel free to contact with me in any inquiry. Goodbye.